Imagine for a moment that there was a single app for your Mac which could collate all of your photographs, no matter where they were located, into one gloriously efficient central archive. Whether you had photos randomly scattered across several hard drives or you had some painstakingly keyworded and tagged collection curated in something like Adobe Lightroom, this one app could see all the photos and access all the tags, keywords, and metadata. Imagine if that app was able to index files, but also access all of the data contained in full application catalogs in Apple Photos, Aperture, Lightroom, Luminar Neo, Capture One, DxO, Photo Lab, Pure Raw. Imagine you could even add your Instagram. Sounds too good to be true, right? But while there are some missing features and minor irritations, for the most part, Peak2 does precisely all of that. About a decade ago, I started using Adobe Lightroom and my main landscape photography catalog now has just over 200,000 photos in it. But I've also got a ton of images that I processed in DxO Photo Lab and Pure Raw. I've got a whole bunch of images stored away on a network NAS drive. I've got two Apple Photos libraries, one of which is over 90 gigs big. I've got photos in Luminar Neo. I've got a separate Lightroom catalog for commissioned work. It's a big old mess and it's precisely the sort of convoluted organizational nightmare that Peak2 was designed to, if not fix, then at least paper over the cracks. There are some big missing features at the moment, such as the ability to reorganize folders or delete images from within the app, but the devs, Syme, are actively developing it with regular updates. So I think it's safe to be optimistic about Peak2's future. Peak2 is an advanced indexing app that solves a number of headaches experienced by digital photographers. But its core feature is that it enables you to catalog, to view and to search all of your photographs in one place, no matter where they are. Let me show you. We are in the main interface of Peak2. As you can see on the left here, I have all sources. I have some source volumes. I have some sources in the form of catalogs. I've got a couple of Lightroom catalogs here. I've got a currently disconnected watched folder on a network drive. I've got my two Apple photo libraries. I've got my Instagram account. I've also got some working folders here, catalogs for DxO Photo Lab. DxO Pure Raw and for Pixel Mater Pro. And I can click on any of these. I'm currently in my Lightroom Landscapes catalog, but I can also, if I want to, click into something like my Instagram account and see all the uploads I've put there. Or I can click on all sources and get an overview of the entire archive of my photos. It's really easy to add a catalog to Peak2. You just click on the little plus sign down here. You can attach a catalog, add your Instagram, Instagram account. You can add any folder. So if you've just got organized photos by Finder, you've just got a load of folders uh, and you just stick everything in there by date order or something, you can just add those or you can have a, a smart album. Now you can also create folders yourself. And Peak2, once you've added it, does a process they call ingesting, where it brings all the data in. It's non-destructive. It does not harm any of your existing catalogs in any way. It just gives an access to them within this system. So as you can see, the centralized design of Peak2 is easy to navigate your myriad source connections thanks to a clean interface. I was wary of importing my main Lightroom catalog into the app, and so I tested it on my smaller work catalog first. 
when that worked perfectly, I imported my main Lightroom catalog of my landscape photographs. This catalog has over 200,000 photographs in it, covering a nearly 20 year period. It took Peak to a couple of days to import the catalog, run its AI analysis and build its local thumbnail archive. Because it's a relatively processor intensive task, I left it running overnight, two nights running. It's a large amount of data and you only have to do it once, but it would have been nice if it was a bit quicker than that. If you have more modest catalog sizes, then Peak 2 will obviously be considerably quicker. The smaller catalog of 2,500 images took well under an hour to import. So now you have all your photographs ingested, you can start browsing and working on your collection. We got our photos imported into Peak 2 and we can now start utilizing this awesome interface to find the photos that we want to organize and or work on. So over on the left here, we've got all our sources, uh, and albums and you can turn on and off any of these sections of it it's a very flexible interface for instance if i hit the s key it takes those sources away on the left i've drilled down into the january 2023 and it's saying that there's 59 versions in there and you can also see that hierarchy in the search window here. At the moment, we're in what they call uh, panorama mode. You can see all the different modes here. We've got panorama, grid, detail, and map. So this is panorama mode. This is the grid mode, kind of masonry mode. And you can, of course, you know, ramp up the size of these thumbnails if you want, or have them small. And I really like this little kind of Polaroid style negative sort of information here as if these were negatives. So you've got the ISO and the camera lens, all sorts of information on those. And we've got the detail view. So if I click on a photo, I can zoom in on it here. And finally, we have the map view, which we can scroll in and see where we are. Over on the right here, we have information about the photo itself. Let's go back into detail view. And you can see we've got these two supporting files. We've got our basic sort of camera exit data down here. We've got the map. If you recall the GPS details of the photo, that will appear here. We've got this version information, which tells me, for instance, if I uploaded this to Instagram, it would appear in here. Any keywords that are attached to it. You've got your exit tab, all the traditional stuff that you used to find in there, your IPTC data and the AI section. And I'll get onto this bit in a minute as well. One of the criticisms of Adobe Lightroom is that its interface is nowhere near as flexible as competing products such as Capture One. So it's great to be able to have access to your Lightroom catalog along with all of its metadata within a fully modular interface. In fact, the only real criticism I have of Peak 2's interface is that it has no multi-monitor functionality whatsoever. Everything is contained within a single window. Hopefully this is something that the devs will address in the future. All right, let's talk about search. One of the most powerful features of Peak 2 is its excellent granular search functionality. Now, obviously, you can just drill down by the dates here, but we've also got the search bar at the top. You can see I've got my landscapes catalog selected. And let's say I wanted to search for bridges. So let's type in bridge. And we get all these different search returns. So you've got the so word bridge in the content descriptions, in any keywords that I've used, in the title of the photograph. The captions there, uh, it's got some geolocations as well. Let's see if we found some software, but this is the interesting one down here where we've got keywords AI. Now, when you ingest, i.e. import your content into Peak 2, what it does is full AI analysis of those images, looking for things like bridges or cars or that kind of stuff. It's not foolproof. Uh, I have got some false positives. For instance, if I search for birds, I get these pictures of kangaroos. But still, it's a really helpful facility 
which turns up images that you might otherwise be searching for through, you know, as in my case, 200,000 photos. So if I click on this bridge keyword AI option, you can see it's pulled up lots of photographs of bridges. The granular search function in Peak 2 is a great feature and brings to mind the kind of expanded search returns you get in something like the Max Finder. Now, I mentioned the fact that an AI analysis is performed on every photograph indexed by Peak 2, and that brings us around to the innovative Panorama Mode. So welcome to Panorama Mode. This is the focus of the AI in Peak 2. What it does is enable you to distill your photos down in ways that you weren't previously able to do easily. At the top here, see so overall best. It has a kind of a, a rule sheet, which you can actually tweak yourself as to what it considers your best photographs. And they appear on this screen here. And there are indeed some nice ones in there. Not necessarily the ones I consider my best, but sometimes it's helpful to get a Dominellis' overview of that, even if it is an AI. We have all these categories here as well. Uh, and it's gone through the AI when it imported all these photographs, scanned them, and as you can see, it's created some pretty accurate categories down here. And we can view these all together. We'll turn them on and off if I unselect all of these. And they'll only select astrophotography and then click see all. We'll get this beautiful collection of astro shots. I did find when I was testing this that uh, it also picked up just shots that were dark. I shoot a lot of bracketed images, which means I get a lot of underexposed photographs. And the AI was picking those up as astro, even though they were not a big deal. And as you can see, it's found plenty of absolutely spot on search results but certainly something they could possibly refine in the future. So here we have all my astro photos, and there's nothing stopping me from distilling this down further still. For instance, if I wanted to only see the astro photographs that I have rated four stars or higher, I can click up here at the top of the screen, and here they are. These are the ones that I think are okay astro photos. Got the categories here, that architecture, nature, all the rest of it. We've also got things like styles here, the abstract, aerial, and close-up. Harmony, which relates to basic color compositions and stuff like that. Uh, the color wheel, so we've got, uh, you know, uh, photographs which are the nice cornflower blue in them if you wanted to search on them. Uh, we've also got people on their own. It did duo, small group, or a large group, and finally, light. And it's really quite interesting, actually, seeing the way that these images can all be classified and the opportunities this opens up to you for creating smart albums. That's pretty neat, isn't it? And remember that the AI tools and search functions can be run across all of the catalogs you've added or all the folders you've added to your watch list. Every photographer loathes doing keywording, and so handing that over to the AI is a real benefit. The AI classification is not perfect, but a promised update will enable users to refine its capabilities with confirm and deny options. Now, one of the ways in which Peak2 differs from something like Mylio is its deep integration with certain apps. Pixelmator Pro, DxO Photo Lab, and DxO Pure Raw all have embedded workflows, but you can use the Peak2 catalog as a jumping off point to any photo editor you have installed. There are two umbrella editing options in Peak 2, the kind of fully embedded experience and a simple jumping off point editing. So for instance, a simple jumping off point, I can click on this photo, say open in and open it in any of these applications, edit it as I will and save it out. Alternatively, there is deeply embedded workflows with Pure Raw, Photo Lab, and Pixelmator Pro. 
And this can work with the databases in those applications in the case of uh, Photolab and Pixelmator. So it'll update within that catalog any changes you make and it'll be reflected back here into Peak2. One of the features that is causing some confusion with Peak2's user base as evidenced by activity in their user support forums is the editing functionality. At its most basic level, you can use Peak2 to open any image for editing in any photo editor you have installed. But what happens next depends entirely on how you import the photograph and which app you decide to edit it with. The app has tight integration with DxO Pure Raw, DxO Photo Lab, and Pixelmator Pro with embedded workflows, which are called workspaces. It can read these apps own libraries, creating sidecar files as it goes. And there's a relatively frictionless flow back and forth between Peak2's master library and the individual libraries in those apps. However, while the catalog functionality of apps like Adobe Lightroom is well implemented in Peak2, the editing side of things is not as frictionless as the free workspace enabled apps I just mentioned. So for instance, while I can see everything in my Lightroom catalogs in Peak2, if I decide to launch an edit for that photo in Adobe Photoshop and then save it out as something like a TIFF, the image will not appear in either the Peak2 or Lightroom catalog because neither of them know it exists. In this scenario, I have to go into Lightroom and synchronize the folder so that it shows up in the Lightroom catalog and this would then be reflected in Peak2. In this sense, it's actually beneficial to have your photographs in a simple folder structure on your drives rather than in a Lightroom catalog because you can simply use Peak2's watch folder feature to monitor them. Using that same example of editing in Photoshop, but this time with watch folders and not a Lightroom catalog, after I save the file, its presence will be detected by Peak2 it will automatically synchronize and the edited image will appear in the Peak2 library. Could of course save myself a lot of ball ache and simply edit the image in Lightroom instead of Photoshop because then all changes would be in the Lightroom catalog which would be automatically picked up by Peak2 and its own library would then synchronize and update. Like I said, it's a bit confusing. One issue that Peak2's developers have addressed is multiple versions of the same photograph. The app cross-references any instances of a photograph across all of your catalogs and watch folders and lets you view them all in one place. So if you've ever grown frustrated looking for a high-resolution master file of a particular image and all you can find is lower-resolution versions, you'll appreciate this duplicate file aggregation. So these are instance. Here is a photo I've literally just processed using DxO Photolab. I sent it over to Photolab, I made a few edits, made it look a bit nicer, and you can see it's now reporting back in the last edit section in Peak2. Peak2 is also keeping track of the files. We've got the original here, which is showing up with this Lightroom icon. That's where it was originally. So that's my source file. And here is the image that I edited in Photolab. So you can keep tabs on all the different versions you have of your various photos simply and easily. Once you've finished all of your editing and are happy with your photograph, you can use Peak2's own export to save out the edited image. The advantage of exporting from within Peak2, as opposed to simply outputting your edits in Lightroom, is that you can export cross-platform smart folders of images curated from multiple locations. You could include some Lightroom images, a couple of shots from the Apple Photos library, Pixelmator image for good measure. One single export would take care of everything. There is a hell of a lot to like about Peak2 of that. There is no doubt. Being able to view all of your photos, no matter where you put them, and whatever app you use to catalog them is just brilliant. And as far as I'm concerned, worth the purchase price on its own. The import process is on the slow side, but it never failed on me. 
and can be done in stages using the re-ingest option. The interface is a thing of beauty that gets out of the way when you need it to and puts all the important stuff close at hand. Being able to create manual or smart albums of images pulled from multiple sources is a game changer, particularly if, like me, you have photos scattered across the 14 corners of the known multiverse. The AI tagging is both time-saving and effective, and a welcome alternative to manual keyword entry. It's great to see the close integration with the DxO apps, Photolab and PureRaw are best-in-class products, and having them work so tightly with Peak2 is a brilliant combination. No application is perfect, of course, and Peak2 does have issues. The editing process takes a bit of getting used to, and I feel that the terminology and functionality of the app integration between Photolab, PureRaw, and Pixelmator Pro could do with being simplified and or reimagined. I've been using this app for a few weeks now, and I'm still not sure I fully understand the difference between the work folder and inside the source options. I don't know whether it was due to the size of my catalog, but I did notice of a delay of a minute or longer for edits to appear in Peak2 after being processed in Photolab. At the moment, Peak2 cannot be considered a DAM or Digital Asset Manager for one simple reason. There's no file manipulation functionality at this stage, meaning that you cannot move files around or delete them. However, this is listed on the dev team's roadmap and so will be included in a future update. In fact, the lead programmer, Mathieu, said it was on its way really soon. Further integration with other apps would be nice too, and the dev team have already indicated that both Luminar AI and Neo are on the roadmap along with Affinity Photo. I'm pretty picky when it comes to keeping software on my Mac, but I can state categorically that Pig2 will be a permanent part of my installation from this day forwards. Like the Skyland team who produced Luminar Neo, P2 has a busy dev team who ensure that the app sees regular, substantial updates to fix existing issues and add new stuff. The development team are responsive to the user base and invite and then act on reasonable requests made to them. Being able to see all of my photographs in one single location, to edit them if I wish, and to gather and then export from multiple sources is mind-bogglingly useful and makes up for any deficiencies I have in my organizational skills. Peak2 is available for Mac only in both subscription and outright purchasing models. It costs $16.99 Australian, that's $9.99 US per month, $167 Australian, that's $99 US per year, or $399 Australian, that's $189 US for a single purchase. There is a no card required free trial, good for 15 days if you'd like to road test it yourself. And that'll do us for this video. How do you organize your photos? And does something like Peak2 appeal to you? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the vid, then please uh, flick us a like and consider subscribing for more solid photography content from yours truly. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.